Hello and welcome back. While getting your amateur license to perform uh, public service may not be your original goal, there are some reasons to consider doing so. Volunteer amateur radio operators help their communities in good times and bad. They do so through community events uh, such as 5Ks, 10Ks, or marathons, and they also do it during the disaster response and various other programs. Organizations like the Red Cross, Salvation Army, FEMA, and local emergency management offices around the country rely on amateur radio operators like us to help with disaster relief in areas where all communications are down. While helping is a, not a license requirement, it is something to think about once you have gotten your license. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This video is Lesson 2, Part 3 of my Amateur Radio Technician License course covering the 2022 to 2026 question pool. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens, and my call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Golf Sierra. I hold an amateur extra license. I have been an amateur radio operator since 2001 and an amateur radio uh, extra since 2014 and teaching amateur radio for over 15 years now. The T2 section covers the operating procedures. On your exam, three questions are selected at random from this sub-element, and there are three groups for a total of 36 questions. This video covers the th third group, T2C, Public Service Emergency Operations, Applicability of the FCC Rules, RACES and ARIES, net and traffic procedures, operating restrictions during emergencies, and the use of phonetics in the message handling. Here comes those rules again. We need to know that FCC rules always apply to the operation of an amateur station. If we review part 97.103, we can see that the station licensee is responsible for the proper operation of a station in accordance with the FCC rules. When the control operator is a different operator than the station licensee, both persons are equally responsible for proper operation in the station. In other words, the FCC rules always apply to us. While this slide is somewhat of a parody, it does get the point across. Having an amateur license is a privilege. The late John F. Kennedy once said, with privilege comes responsibility. Our exam question is, when do FCC rules not apply to the operation of an amateur station? A, when the operating a race station. B, when operating under special FEMA rules. C, when operating under special ARIES rules. D, FCC rules always apply? The correct answer is, of course, D, FCC rules always apply. Understand that the typical duties of a net control station are to call the net to order and direct communications between stations checking in. This slide shows a snippet from the ARL net control station operational procedures. A net control station is an operator responsible for controlling all radio traffic in a repeater during a directed net. The net control station calls the net to order and directs all communications between stations. That was an excerpt from a live net operation. The 7.290 traffic net is an independent public service traffic net operating on about 7.290 kilohertz. It has been in continuous operation since 1953, handling formal written traffic, informational messages, and operating extending sessions during emergencies and special needs. Our exam question is as follows. Which of the following are typical duties of a net control station? 
A. Choose the regular net meeting time and frequency. B. Ensure that all stations checking into the net are properly licensed for operation on the net frequency. C. Call the net to order and direct communications between stations checking in. D. All these are correct. The correct answer is C. Call the net to order and direct communications between stations checking in. You should learn that to ensure that voice messages containing unusual words are received correctly, the best technique is to spell the words using the phonetic alphabet. Sometimes ambient noise near us, radio interference, and issues like overmodulation make it difficult to understand others. In this example, one operator said Sawmill Road, but what the other operator copied was Saw Hill Road. Saying the information sent phonetically makes it much more challenging to misunderstand the message. The NATO phonetic alphabet is the one most commonly used. It is the same as the United States military uses. Here is A through Z using the phonetic alphabet. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Gulf, Hotel, India, Juliet, Kilo, Lima, Mike, November, Oscar, Papa, Quebec, Romeo, Sierra, Tango, Uniform, Victor, Whiskey, X-Ray, Yankee, Zulu. Our exam question looks like this. What technique is used to ensure that the voice messages containing unusual words are received correctly? A. Send the words by voice in Morse code. B. Speak very loudly into the microphone. C. Spell the words using the standard phonetic alphabet. D. All these are correct. We know that the answer is C. Spell the words out using the standard phonetic alphabet. We need to know that RACES is an FCC Part 97 amateur radio service for civil defense communication during national emergencies. Part 97, subpart E, deals with providing emergency communications. Part 97.407 talks explicitly about Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Services, or RACES. The exam question pool has this question. What is RACES? A, an emergency organization combining amateur radio and civil band operations and frequencies. B, an International Radio Experimentation Society. C, a radio contest held in a short period, sometimes called a sprint. Or D, an FCC Part 97 amateur radio service for civil defense communication during national emergencies. The correct answer is D, an FCC Part 97 amateur radio service for civil defense communications during national emergencies. Understand that the word traffic regarding the net operation refers to messages exchanged by net stations. An example of traffic is a radiogram. An ARRL radiogram is a formal written message or traffic routed by a network of amateur radio operators through traffic nets. Our test question is like this. What does the term traffic refer to in net operation? A. Messages exchanged by net stations. B. The number of stations checking in and out of the net. C. Operation by mobile or portable stations. D. Request to activate the net by a served agency. The correct answer is A. Messages exchanged by the net stations. You need to know that the Amateur Radio Emergency Services is a group of licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered their qualifications and equipment for communications duty in the public service. The Amateur Radio Emergency Services, ARIES, consists of licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered their qualifications and equipment with their local ARIES leadership for communications duty in the public service when disaster strikes. Our test question is like this. What is an amateur Radio Emergency Service, ARIES. A, a group of licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered their qualifications and equipment for communications duty in the public service. 
be a group of licensed amateurs who are members of the military and who have voluntarily agreed to provide message handling services in a, in a case of an emergency. C, a training program that provides licensing courses for those interested in obtaining an amateur license to use during emergencies. D, a training program that certifies amateur operators for membership in the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service. Of course, the correct answer is A, a group of licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered their qualifications and equipment for communications duty in the public service. Understand that unless you're reporting an emergency, transmit only when directed by net control station when you participate in a net. This slide shows a snippet of a net control script. Nets are directed by the net control station, which typically reads a script similar to this example. Notice that the net control station will say, please do not break into the net without direction from the net control. The exception is having an emergency to report. Our related question is, which of the following is standard practice when you're participating in a net? A, when first responding to the net control station, transmit your call sign, name, and address as in the FCC database. B, record the time of each of your transmissions. C, unless you're reporting an emergency, transmit only when directed by the net control station. D, all these choices are correct. The correct answer is C, unless you're reporting an emergency, transmit only when directed by the net control station. We should recognize that a characteristic of good traffic handling is passing messages exactly as received. Being accurate during emergencies can sometimes be the difference between life and death. Other times it can be just cause for discomfort or other issues. Take this message for example. The shelter manager is asking the Red Cross for more cots and sanitation kits for all five of their shelters. Suppose that the operator passes on some instead of five. As a result, some will be sleeping on the floor and living in nasty conditions. On our exam, the question looks something like this. Which of the following is a characteristic of good traffic handling? A, passing messages exactly as received. B, making decisions as to whether the messages are worthy of relay or delivery. C, ensuring that any newsworthy messages are related to the news media. D, all these choices are correct. As we know, the correct answer is A, passing messages exactly as received. It is imperative to know that yes, amateur station control operators are permitted to operate outside the frequency privileges of their license class, but only in situations involving the immediate safety of human life or the protection of property. Suppose you have your technician license and your uncle Bob invites you to his mountain cabin for the weekend. While hiking down a steep incline, he slips, tumbles down a ravine, and sustains a broken leg. Well, your uncle is too heavy for you to lift, much less help him up 40 feet of loose rock. Plus, the temperature is dropping and it's starting to snow. You run back to his cabin and turn on his HF radio and call CQ and ask for help. You are allowed to do this because human life is at risk. Our test question is, are amateur station control operators ever permitted to operate outside the frequency privileges of their license class? A, no. B, yes, but only when part of a FEMA uh, emergency plan. C, yes, but only when part of a RACES emergency plan. D, yes, but only in situations involving the immediate safety of human life or the protection of property. Did you get this one? The answer is D. Yes, but only in situations involving the immediate safety of human life or protection of property. You need to know that the information in the preamble of a formal traffic message is the information needed to track the message. In this slide, we revisit the radiogram we looked at before. The preamble is circled. 
Notice that the number box shows 207. This number means that this was the 207th message. It also shows who originated the message, the location it was from, the date and time, along with other ancillary data. On the exam question, it looks like this. What information is contained in the preamble of the formal traffic message? A, the email address of the operating station. B, the address of the intended recipient. C, the telephone number of the addressee. D, information needed to track the message. The answer you should give is D, information needed to track the message. You would be wise to know the number of words or word equivalents in the text portion of the message is what is meant by the term check in a radiogram header. Let's look at the message again. It says need more cots and sanitation kits at all five shelters. If we check our word count, we will see that there are 10 words in the message. Therefore, we would write the numeric 10 in the box labeled check. On the exam, look for this question. What is meant by check in a radiogram header? A, the number of words or word equivalents in the text portion of the message. B, the call sign of the originated station. C, a list of stations that have relayed the message. D, a box on the message form that indicates that the message was received and or relayed. The answer is you know it is A, the number of words or word equivalents in the text portion of the message. We are at the end of lesson two, part three. No matter what side of the climate change fence you're on, it doesn't matter. The fact is that over the past 50 years, there's been a five-fold increase in natural disasters. Not only have they increased in frequency, but also in intensity. Personally, I feel that I can't be expected others to come to my aid unless I'm willing to go to theirs too. For that reason, I have taught amateur radio technician license courses to first responders and community emergency response teams. I've also been involved with both Aries and races in my communities. Winston Churchill once said, you make a living by what you get. You make a life by what you give. Until next time, my friends, never stop learning.